Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 128. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, have you ever wanted to start a podcast but don't have the time, knowledge, or skills? Just record an MP3, send it to my team here at Entrepreneur on Fire, and we do the rest. It's really that simple. Visit podplatform.com, that's P-O-D platform.com to find out more. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Dave Kerpen. Dave, are you prepared to ignite? Yes. All right. Dave is a co-founder of Likeable Media, an award-winning social media and word-of-mouth marketing firm. The founder and CEO of Likeable Social, a social media marketing solution for small businesses, and a New York Times best-selling author of Likeable Social Media and Likeable Business. I've given Fire Nation a little overview, Dave, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about you personally, we want to get to know you, and then take another minute and tell us about your business. Sure. So, um, personally, most important, uh, I am the father of two girls, uh, five-year-old Kate and nine-year-old Charlotte. Actually, they're, they're entrepreneurs as well. They started a lemonade stand this summer and uh, made over $2,000 uh, in revenues in, 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 in uh, six weeks, which I think is pretty, pretty impressive for a five-year-old and nine-year-old. Yeah, it's more than I made in six weeks, so sweet. <laughs> we, li- we live in, uh, we live in uh, Port Washington, New York. I grew up here in New York. I grew up in uh, Brooklyn and um, I studied education, wanted to become a teacher, but I ended up uh, going into marketing. And uh, um, uh, when when we started our company, let's see, you can ask me about how we started our company. No. So I'll tell you my my, 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 my company story <laughs> because it's really related to my personal story. When I got engaged to my wife, uh, Carrie, we both had a marketing background. Uh, and sales background, but uh, we didn't have enough money to afford a big wedding, and I wanted a very large wedding. I wanted to be able to invite everyone I ever knew, and of course, New York City is pretty expensive to have a wedding. So we ended up um, partnering with a minor league baseball team. We called them up. We pitched them on an idea we had to get married uh, uh, during a game and to create a promotion around that uh, wedding, and uh, they said yes, and we were able to resell uh, the sponsorship inventory from that game to our wedding vendors. So 1-800-Flowers.com sponsored our flowers and Smirnoff sponsored our alcohol and David's Bridal sponsored our bridesmaids gowns and so on and so forth. We raised $100,000 for an amazing wedding, 500 friends and family and 5,000 strangers. Uh, raised $20,000 for charity and the event was great because they got married to the love of my life but it turned out to be a pretty awesome uh, marketing promotion as well. We generated about $20 million in earned media. We were on the CBS Early Show, ABC World News Tonight, CNBC On The Money, The New York Times, and thousands of blogs. And after the wedding, our vendor said this was great. Uh, to date, it's the number one ROI promotion 1-800-Flowers.com has ever done. Our vendor said this was great. What are you guys doing next? And we couldn't get married again, so we started a company instead. And uh, we've been very blessed with rapid growth over the last couple of years. Uh, my wife is now taking over Likeable uh, Media, which is a, a social media and word of mouth marketing firm, as you said, that works with large brands like GE, Logitech, Verizon, Neutrogena, 1-800-Flowers.com, and more. She'll take over that company, Gen 1, and uh, I am uh, working full-time now on Likeable Local, which is a new software startup that takes all of, our, all, all of our learnings from working with big brands in social media over the last five years and applies them, automates them for uh, small businesses so that small businesses can get the same advantage that large businesses now enjoy in, in working with Likeable Media. Uh, as you mentioned, I've written a couple of books, and you know, for me, I really enjoy any opportunity to speak or teach, which is why I enjoy doing uh, shows like this. Wonderful. That was such a great intro, Dave, and it really got that motivational ball rolling. So I'm just excited to keep that going into the next round, which is a success quote. We talked in the pre-interview about your success quote. I'm really excited for you to share it with Fire Nation. What do you have for us? Sure. Love the work you're with. Um, to me, 
Uh, passion is, is, is one of the most important elements of um, business and, and, and really life. And if you can't be passionate about what you're doing, you got to quit, like today. Um, there's just no excuse whatsoever. I know some people have mortgages, some people have responsibilities, but you've got to find a way to love what you're doing or quit or instill passion into what it is you're doing somehow. And I've been very blessed to to be able to have a number of jobs in my life and now a couple of businesses in my life that I'm super, super passionate about. And it really, you know, it really does make a difference. Uh, passion is very contagious. Uh, so is lack of passion. And when you are passionate about what you do and surround yourself with people who are equally passionate, you're going to enjoy enjoy what you do and, and, and it's going to it's going to have meaning for you every day. Well, take that down to the ground level, Dave. How have you applied that mantra, that quote to your everyday life, to your business? Well, every single day I wake up and I ask myself if this is what I want to do. And if the answer is no, I would quit. And if the answer is yes, full speed ahead. And, um, you know, I have had a few a few different uh, careers. I was, uh, uh, I was in radio and then I was a teacher for a few years. And, uh, and now, now I've been in business for the last five years. And... I almost got got into politics, but uh, you know, I decided that wasn't the right time for me. And so, yeah, to me, to me, it's a constant. It's very easy to fall into the doldrums with whatever it is you do. It's really important to keep asking yourself: Is this what I want to do? Is today what I want to? Is this what I want to do today? Is this what I want to do tomorrow? Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And when that changes, you got to change with that answer. Absolutely. And this is kind of diverging off course a little bit because I'm looking into your office right now and I see your likable social media orange thumbs up in the background, which I just love. And my question is, when are you going after Mark Zuckerberg for taking your thumbs up thunder? Well, you know, uh, he had the <laughs> thumb first, but the thumbs have always been around. And it's funny because um, you can't trademark the thumb. We do have the word likable trademarked, which is exciting, but you can't trademark the thumb. But uh, Likeable Media has expanded globally in the last year, and uh, I was actually in Mexico last year uh, for the launch of Likeable 2, which is our Spanish, uh, Spanish language uh, social media agency based in Mexico City. So shouldn't that and, be Likeable Dose? Well, it's Likeable 2, uh, with, it's T-U. With the, with, see, the problem is when I say it, when you read it, it makes sense. When I say it, they think it's like Teen Wolf 2, the movie. They don't know if it's T-O-O or, T or T-O or the number 2. No, it's likable 2, which means likable you in Spanish. So uh, anyway, I was, I was doing interviews with the, uh, the, the, the media in Mexico City, and somebody actually asked me uh, uh, on Mexico City radio, how does it feel to have invented the thumbs up? <laughs> Which was pretty funny, and I was like, I, I hesitated for a moment there because you know our our uh, core value is transparency. But then I figured, you know what, just go for it. So I said, it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> that would have exactly been my answer. I was going to say that. I'm so glad that you came back with that. You just got to roll with it sometimes. That's phenomenal, Dave. Let's transition now to our next topic, and that's failure. That's challenges, obstacles that as entrepreneurs we face throughout our journey, and. We don't let these failures, these challenges define us as entrepreneurs, and we use them to propel us forward, to pivot in new directions. Take us back to a time in your journey when you failed, when you came up against an obstacle that you had to push through or somehow divert around, and then share with us how you overcame this. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you sort of the, 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 the even deeper uh, 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 background into my company and life because I, think, I do think that's pretty valuable. Um, so I mentioned like the, the, the good stuff, like the wedding stuff, but actually m when I met my wife, it, it, it went back a little bit further. I met her on October 1st, 2001. I was a, a salesperson for Radio Disney at the time. It, in fact, I was the number one salesperson in the country, uh, for Radio Disney working out of their Boston office and Carrie, uh, started, uh, work on, on, on that day, October 1st, 2001. And I remember thinking, this girl is amazing. Uh, I have found a new best friend. She is just incredible. Uh, we became best friends. In fact, she, she dropped me to number two in, as the top salesperson in the country. She dropped me to number two within three months, and I, I fell absolutely madly in love with her. Um, there was one slight problem, though. Uh, she was married at the time. And so, uh, of course, what what... 
I wanted was not meant to be uh, at the time. And it was a really, really hard situation. It was a situation where I was used to getting what I wanted. Uh, I was used to being very competitive. And here I was, uh, you know, with, with, with somebody that I, I, I felt, you know, so strongly about was, was the person that I, I needed to spend the rest of my life with. Um, but, but, you know, the timing was obviously very, very off. And so, um, you know, I, I see that, I guess, as a failure. Although, you know, what, what, it, what it really involved in order for me to overcome the situation was, was, was truly letting go and knowing that there are some things that are outside of my control. And uh, as it turns out, you know, I, I was able to let go. It was a very, very hard, one of the two or three hardest things in my life. Um, and she moved to New York to focus on her uh, marriage, and I ended up doing what anyone with unrequited love would do. I went on a reality television show in order to, <laughs> in order to find true love. And uh, you know, after that experience, about a year and a half later, I was living in Los Angeles, and I just uh, I, I hadn't talked to Carrie in, 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 in about a year and a half, and I I, um, I just out of the blue, you know, I I, I uh, was at this. Uh, sort of red carpet event. I, I had been a reality show D-list celebrity for a little while. So I was at this red carpet event and I just called her and asked what was going on. And she said, oh, I'm actually going through a divorce now and uh, things didn't work out. And so I was able to, of course, move to New York and we started dating and I told you the rest of the, the story. And so, you know, for me, that was, that was a, it was a huge, it was a huge personal obstacle. And as it turns out in the long run, a an obstacle to uh, forming a likable media, um, but you know, for me, I learned how important it is to let go. And so many folks, you know, the serenity prayer uh, is something that touches so many lives because so many folks do struggle with addiction, or they know somebody that struggles with addiction. But I truly, really, I, I truly believe in the concept behind the serenity prayer. You know, God grant me the, the, the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, you know, and be able to let go and not try to control what we can't change. Um, as well as, uh, you know, of course, the ability to change what we can um, and, and, and then to understand, to understand the difference between what we can and can't change. So for the Fire Nation listeners, to include myself, who weren't aware of this reality TV show appearance in your D-list status, can you take us on just a couple minutes summary of exactly what that process was? Sure. Um, I met the casting folks at a bar in Boston. They were looking for sexy singles, um, but they somehow found me. <laughs> I spent uh, three, three and a half months in Acapulco Bay at a $30 million home. Uh, it was a show... Um, uh, about sexy singles uh, coupling up uh, and trying to stay there at the uh, Circle Paradise, Paradise Hotel. It was on Fox, and you had to stay there as long as you could. And uh, it was for me, I learned a lot because there were 1,200 cameras on me total. So, it, you know, I had always believed in transparency, but it was a great. It was a great lesson to fully, fully embrace transparency because I had no choice, right? Literally anything and everything I did was, was being filmed and could air on national television on, on Fox. Uh, as it turns out, I, I made it all the way to the end, so I was on all 31 episodes of the show. And then uh, at the very end, my, my, my partner won, but uh, they gave her two checks, one made out to her for $125,000 and then one blank one and they gave her an opportunity to share the money if she wanted to or to write it out for herself and unfortunately she chose to write out the check to herself in the final scene of the show. So I didn't, I didn't actually win any money but I, but I learned a lot and um, you know, it's a fun, fun little experience I guess. Now at that moment in time, did you expect her to write your name down or did you have no idea? Uh, I know I expected her to share the money because I would have shared. Yeah, I, I, I sure, as God is my witness, I know that I, I certainly would have shared the money. But uh, again, that was, uh, that was a long time ago. That was a full nine years ago. And, you know, $150,000 uh, uh, has a lot of meaning for her. You know, I think, honestly, not to be mean, but, but still today. And, uh, and for me, you know, having been uh, a su pretty successful business uh, owner uh, in the long run, uh, uh, things worked out very, very well financially. And uh, I'm happily married with two amazing children. So, again, I, I couldn't uh, ask for a better uh, total outcome. What a great way to look at that because you just don't know what would have happened had you had that name written on your check. It's just impossible to know. 
So Dave, let's use that and transition to the next topic, which is the other end of the spectrum. And that's the aha moment. As entrepreneurs, we have these moments that just inspire us. They propel us forward. They really just make us better entrepreneurs in general. Share with us an aha moment that you've had at some point in your journey and how you use that moment to turn it into success. One aha moment for us was really about the Facebook platform. Um, we had, when we started off, we were doing word of mouth marketing and mostly offline, uh, events like baseball stadium events and mall events. And we were doing a house party program for Verizon where we were selecting people that had Ver the Verizon Fios service already. It's a, you know, TV and internet service. And then we were throwing house parties, house parties for them where they would invite friends and watch a, a, a TV event and you know, perhaps sign up some of their friends for Verizon Files service. We were having a hard time, hard time finding uh, people with the Verizon Files service. And so we turned to Facebook, which had just opened up beyond college students in 2007. We turned to Facebook to help us recruit. And very quickly, we realized that Facebook was a pretty amazing recruiting tool for finding people. And so then I think my aha moment was, was realizing that you know, if word could spread so quickly on Facebook, then we could probably do a better job creating word of mouth and buzz for our clients on Facebook than in baseball stadiums and malls. And so we were able to pivot our business pretty early into doing digital word of mouth marketing and social media marketing away from event marketing, which can be very costly and, you know, the profit margins can be very low on. And, uh, you know, for me, that was a, a very fortunate aha moment, I guess. Dave, have you had an I've made it moment? I think we continue to have moments. Um, one moment leads to the next. And, you know, for me, I'm actually super, super uh, competitive and I'm a perfectionist. And unfortunately, I'm, fortunately or, un or unfortunately, I'm never really happy. So I don't, I don't really feel like I've made it. I think there's tons and tons of work that we still need to do. But I think for me, when, when we made our first million dollars, that was probably our, our first aha moment where it felt like, wow, you know, we've actually... We've actually built a real company here, and um, and then you know more recently when we were named to Crane's uh, best places to work in New York list, that was um, that was another sort of really nice moment. Um, but that said, like I said, it's to me, you know, to use the baseball analogy, we're we're really still in the first inning. There's just so much to uh, there's so much to do, and so to really say that I've made it, you know, would just be um, it just it just it just wouldn't be. Uh, representative of how I really feel. I hear you. And that's why I love this question because every entrepreneur approaches it differently. Some entrepreneurs have aha moments every single day, according to them, and others will never have one because they look at it as the end of their journey. And for me, having those I've made it moments is part of the journey. It's those milestones we really just need to appreciate these accomplishments that we've had. And it really does sound like you're enjoying the journey, Dave. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely. I, I see happiness much more as a journey than a destination. So Dave, we are going to move into the next topic now, and that is your current business. You just have a lot of exciting things going on in a lot of different areas. If you could just pull out one thing that's really exciting you in your business right now, what would that be? Well, our local product. Um, you know, for, we've, we've gotten down the social media for big business thing. And we're doing some really great work. But for me, I get most excited about helping small businesses. And the local product has such an amazing ability to scale. You know, we've just launched it. We only have a couple hundred businesses up and running on the platform now. But we have huge plans. We want to have, you know, 100,000 businesses on it, you know, within the next several years. Yes. And, and one day, a million small businesses using our platform. And so, uh, to me, that's really the most exciting. And on that note, what is your vision for the future? I envision a world in which every business, regardless of their size, has an opportunity to reach their audience and grow their business and, and use social media as the great equalizer that it can be. I think social media started off as the, as the great equalizer, mm. um, but just as uh, the reality is just as they've done with other media, large businesses have started to leverage their own resources, you know, like paying likable media, for instance, to, to get more than their small business counterparts out of social media. And to me, there's still this great, great opportunity for uh, businesses, organizations, and governments of all sizes to leverage social media to, to do business, to, to, to do right by their customers, 
um, and by their staff. And so I, I, I envision a world in which there, there really is more, more likable, more likable businesses and, and that we can, we can play a part in that. Huge opportunity there. So Dave, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning round. And this nice. is where I get to provide you with a series of questions. And you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? All I have to do is give you amazing and mind-blowing answers, no problem. I'm setting the bar low for you, buddy. <laughs> what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Fear. The number one thing that holds people back is fear. Fear of change, fear of failure. Um, but uh, you, just, I, you just can't let it, let it get in your way. You just can't. What is the best business advice that you ever received? Hire slow and fire fast. You know, people are so excited about new employees, they end up hiring fast, and then they're so nervous to let, let the wrong people, you know, to let people down they, 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 that, they, that they fire uh, too slowly. It's sort of like the, the, the stock market. People, people like to, people, you're supposed to buy low and sell high, but people end up doing the opposite. You know, people do the opposite of what they should do in business. And, you know, you've got to take your time in finding the perfect people for your organization. And if and when it doesn't work out, you've got to just cut bait as quickly as possible. What do you regret doing or not doing at some point in your journey? And what lesson did you learn? I regret not getting to software sooner. You know, we had an opportunity. I, we have friends like Mike Lazaro at Buddy Media and Victoria Ransom at Wildfire that built software platforms from the start. And you know, exited at, uh, you know, over, over, you know, 300 million and $700 million respectively. Uh, we've built a, a wonderful company that I'm very proud of, but I should have gotten into software a lot earlier. If you could only choose two websites to obtain all the information needed to succeed, what would they be and why? Wow. Great question. Uh, I'll go with Mashable because in our business, at least, you know, all things social media, all things internet, all things business and all things marketing, Mashable has, has been a really great website. And I'll go straight business side. I'll go Inc. Inc.com. Love Inc. We actually have Eric, the editor-in-chief on the show Wednesday. Oh, fantastic. Give him my best. I, I'm, a col I'm a columnist uh, and, and do videos now for Inc. And Eric's a great guy. Oh, such a great guy. Definitely will. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with Fire Nation? I love Buffer App. Buffer App allows me to uh, schedule out tweets, Facebook posts, LinkedIn messages well in advance so that I can be a busy senior executive um, and still be super, super active in social media really easily. What is the best business book that you've read in the last six months? What's the last great business book that I have read in the last six months? You know, I'm going to go with a book that I'm, I just finished uh, by Guy Kawasaki called Ape, Author, Publisher, Entrepreneur. Yes. And I think it's a great book for any writers out there or aspiring writers or entrepreneurs that also want to be thought leaders. That, that book is a must read. Couldn't agree more. We had him on the show about a month ago, and he talked specifically about Ape, and it was just really exciting, the passion that he put behind that work. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, and, it, and it really reads, reads well. Guy, guy is a great guy, and uh, uh, Ape is probably my favorite uh, Guy Kawasaki book now. So, yeah, it's good stuff. I also love, I love Seth Godin. His new book, uh, Icarus Deception, is great. Um, I love uh, uh, Patrick uh, Lencioni and all, everything he, that he writes. And, of course, I love Jim Collins and everything that he writes. <laughs> all right. So, Dave, this is the last question. It's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, and then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, but only $500 in your pocket, a computer with internet access, your food and shelter is completely taken care of. What would you do in the next seven days? I am going to host a party. Yes. An amazing party and invite people that I think are influencers in this world, and I'm going to learn from them. With that $500, I'm going to invest in human capital, in the relationships that I would meet that night at that party. Oh, you are the 127th interview on Entrepreneur on Fire and the first person to throw a party. And I think that's a brilliant idea because who doesn't love a good party? Well, thank you. I, 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 it would be great to have a great party. 
Uh, hopefully, five hundred dollars could still throw me a good party in this in this new planet. Uh, but I think I could man. I think I could manage. <laughs> Dave, that was great actionable advice. And you've given us incredible actionable advice this entire interview, and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then give yourself a plug, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. So in my, uh, the, the guidance will be both guidance and a plug, right? In my new book, Likeable Business, I talk about the 11 concepts to building a likeable, pro- likeable profitable business in today's world. And I start with listening, and I end with gratefulness. To me, these are the two most important things. Listen to everyone around you, to your customers, to your staff, to your prospects, to your competitors. Listen to everyone and be grateful for everyone in your life. Gratefulness does have an ROI if you take the time to really experience it and thank others. Dave, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. All right. Thanks so much. Have a likable day. Fire Nation, do you have a product or service that you would like to share with the 100,000 plus unique downloads Entrepreneur on Fire generates every month consisting of passionate entrepreneurs? Chris Brogan sponsored an episode for his book, The Impact Equation, with great results. If you would like to have 15 seconds at the top of our show to share your product or message, go to SponsorEOFire.com to find out more. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.